Hello, I'm Mike Platt, Technical Services Engineer for Coracote Limited. This is one of a series of technical videos we are producing to inform our customers and colleagues about various technical aspects of protective coatings. This video is on the subject of abrasion and testing. Abrasion may be defined as one material rubbing against another causing loss from one or both materials. Abrasion may be wet or dry and a purely mechanical effect or contain an element of corrosion which may be a minor element or very significant to the extent it amounts to most of the damage perceived as abrasion. There is an element of cutting and gouging in some environments, impact and velocity in others or all elements or combinations of all these elements. The number of variables make each environment different and difficult to assess and compare one with another. Abrasion resistance may be achieved by utilising soft or hard materials. Sometimes a soft material such as rubber exhibits the best resistance to the problem and sometimes a hard material such as tungsten or a nickel iron alloy such as NIART gives the best resistance. When testing, it is simple to say how much material loss is achieved over a given period of time. However, in real life, what is causing the abrasion and defining that is a different subject and very difficult to define. When you think about a particular circumstance, abrasion may be caused in a dry or wet environment by particles that are large or small, or a combination of both. The impingement angle can vary significantly as can the angularity and hardness of the particle. Temperature will play a part, as will the corrosivity of the environment. A very large amount of variables and permutations to assess. Because of the foregoing, testing using a standard test method is by no means certain to be representative of that material's performance in a particular environment. In fact, testing using a standard test method is fraught with difficulty and can often give spurious results. We are concerned primarily with linings, coatings and paints and use two particular test methods. The first is the rotary abrasion tester. The second is an in-house test devised to overcome some of the issues with the first whilst by no means being a problem-free solution, it is effective. The rotary abrader consists of a pair of wheels made from an abrasive compound variable in grain size and hardness to suit the material being tested. The wheels are free to rotate and are mounted on an axle offset to the centre of the drive shaft rotation to cause a scuffing effect. The wheels are loaded with a weight, usually one kilo, to give them a downward force on the test plate. As the wheels rotate, they wear a groove in the test plate. After a certain number of revolutions, normally 1,000, the machine is stopped and the test plate measured to find the loss in weight caused by the abrasion in grams. The in-house tester is a free particle jet abrader. The device consists of a compressed air supply, abrasive media, a pressure pot, hose and nozzle. It is a version of grit blasting with a fixed size nozzle, angle of nozzle to the test piece, usually 45 degrees, and distance from the test piece. It has a constant air supply volume, pressure and abrasive flow. The test is carried out by coating a sample plate at a given thickness and when fully cured it is weighed and placed on the sample test bed. The apparatus is started and the test is conducted for a given period of time, usually two minutes or until the substrate becomes exposed. The results are given as weight loss or time to substrate exposure. The foregoing represent only two types of tests available for evaluating abrasion and comparing one material with another. They do not assess the suitability for a particular abrasive environment. Further, they only assess dry abrasion, and yet many abrasive environments are in a fluid such as water, and often chemical slurries. One form of apparatus for evaluating materials in a wet environment, again only capable of comparison testing, is a rectangle made up of approximately 100mm diameter pipework. The straights are connected together with bends and two halves connected with union couplers. The pipework is coated internally 
before the two half sections are filled with a suitable abrasive and fluid and connected together. The pipework is then mounted on a frame and rotated at slow speed by an electric motor. The apparatus is dismantled at given time periods and the wear or damage visually evaluated before being put back on test. The components can also be weighed to assess loss. There are several issues with the most common piece of equipment used for testing linings and coatings, the scuffing abrasive wheel method. The wheels are interchangeable with different types of abrasive for different types of material. The load, force can be changed. Not all abrasives are suitable for all materials. The wheels may clog with the abraded material and thereafter stop abrading effectively. The abraded material may not be efficiently removed from the track giving erroneous results. The wheels themselves may be abraded by the material being tested. As wheels wear, the scuffing abrading action may change in magnitude. As a result of the above issues, when comparing results, great care has to be taken to compare like with like. What should be reported is not only the weight loss, but the type of wheel, load, and the number of revolutions or cycles. Here is a comparison using two different wheel types on the same material. Material 1, H18 wheels with 1000 cycles, 1 kilo load. Material 2, H18 wheels with 1000 cycles, 1 kilo load. Material 1, CS17 wheels with 1000 cycles, 1 kilo load. It is obvious that there is something wrong with the second set of tests. The result is the same on two substantially different materials, whereas in the first set of test results, the results are significantly different. This is probably due to wheel clogging in the second set of tests. With regards to the in-house testing, there is more consistency, although establishing the same abrasive flow can be difficult from test to test. But the end numbers do not relate to any other test standard and so cannot be compared with other test house results. The test by necessity is aggressive and therefore short as the operator has to watch the whole time the test is being conducted in order to stop the test should bare metal be exposed. This test is not suitable for materials not considered highly abrasion resistant or thin films. The rotating tube test is probably more relevant to many wet environments encountered but again is only representative of that particle size, abrasive media, liquid and velocity. Again, it cannot be compared with other international standards and is used to assess different materials within that specific environment. With all the tests, the best one evaluated is not necessarily the best one for a particular environment and judgment of what to use becomes very subjective. In one example, the customer pumping ash had a pump breakdown due to worn casings and was desperate to get it working again. The work was initially refused as it was assessed that the repair lifespan would be very short. The customer insisted the work be done at his risk and repairs were carried out using an abrasion resistant material. After operation of several months, the customer bought another pump saying the first one was still working. In fact, the initial pump lasted more than two years before it failed and was scrapped. A sister plant with the same problems some 300 kilometers away heard about the repairs on the first plant and one of their pumps was duly coated. To all intents and purpose, the environments were the same. The repaired pump lasted a bare three days in service to the disappointment of all concerned. It turned out the second plant was burning a different coal and the ash, although appearing the same, was different. Because of the foregoing, judging what may or may not be successful in alleviating abrasion in a particular environment is very difficult. Previous examples with real life results and experience play a big part in making material judgments. We hope this helps you understand some of the issues involved with abrasion testing and specification for its reduction. Thank you for your interest in watching this video.